Welcome back to TEC2. We're continuing our series on the ION communicating control system. Uh, we have gone through all of the startup procedures with you guys and through all the advanced settings. If you didn't check out those videos, please use the link up top here and check those out. Now we're gonna dive into settings that are specific to the furnaces and specifically we're gonna work on a day and night modulating gas furnace. Um, we could also do the same thing with a Heil or a Tempstar or something like that, but we happen to have a day and night in the lab, so we're gonna jump on that and go through optimizing all the furnace related settings. So let's get started. We're out here at our modulating gas furnace. We're gonna continue on with some of the setting adjustments that you can make, and we're gonna focus specifically on the furnace settings. So we got a previous video that we did on all the basic settings. Now we're on the furnace settings. So I'm already into the service setup screens. I'm gonna go under setup in this case, and obviously I'm gonna pick furnace. And we'll go through each one of these and explain what each setting does so you can make adjustments for your customer. Gas heat airflow. I gotta admit that I do not like this screen. It is very frustrating to me, and you'll see why in a second. But if I don't have enough airflow on my project to get air out the furthest duct runs, I can tell the furnace to run in a higher airflow in the heating mode, and that's what this would be here. I can choose comfort or efficiency. I personally would like it to say low, high, more, less, something like that. But it says comfort and efficiency. I literally forget what it means every single time. So I press the info button and it says comfort provides lower airflows. So that's lower airflow, that's more. However, to me, green means more of something and red means less, so it's not intuitive, right? So it's the opposite. That's less, that would be more, okay? Low heat rise, it's another heating airflow related setting, typically for a bypass humidifier. If I got a bypass humidifier, I'm stealing some of the airflow off of the system and using that to run it through the humidifier. So I gotta speed up the blower to provide more airflow knowing I'm gonna steal some of it. So if I have a bypass humidifier, I would turn that on. Or if I just needed more airflow in general, I could also turn that on for that, right? So that would be the least amount of airflow. That would be more. That would be even more, all right? If I back out of there, the next one is AC heat pump airflow. Now we're doing the furnace setup, but I'm showing you an AC heat pump related thing. That's because the furnace's blower is the fan that's being used when I'm in the AC mode. So I'm setting it up in the furnace circuit board right now. So the first one on the left is my cooling airflow. In the middle, I'd have heat pump if I had a heat pump, which I do not today. And on the right, I have uh, dehumidification mode. So on the left side over here, I got a couple different choices, right? So comfort, efficiency, max. Sometimes you'll also see five choices, quiet, comfort, efficiency 325, efficiency 350, and max. Just depends on the kind of unit you're connected to and so forth. So comfort means 300 to 325 CFM per ton in that range. That's the normal scenario, that's the default. That's what you want for most projects for good dehumidification control when in the cooling mode. However, if that's not enough airflow to get air to the farthest register in the cooling mode, you can go up to a higher one. So in this case, efficiency, or on some of the other ones, efficiency 325, which means 325 CFM per ton, or efficiency 350, which means 350 CFM per ton. And then if that's still not enough airflow, you can go to max, which is the most you can get, which is 400 CFM per ton. That's the traditional 1960s, 1970s number we've always used, right? 400 CFM per ton. Nowadays, we default things less because we know it gives better control. But you can go up to 400 if you need to. Just know that'll be louder and it won't dehumidify as well. But if I need to do that to get air from the furthest, to the furthest register, that's my way to do it. The dehumidifier, my choices are normal and high. So normally you would just leave it in normal, obviously. Um, the only time you'd ever go to high, I mean, the idea is when I'm in dehumidification mode, the thermostat calls for the compressor to come on, on one of the lowest stages available to it, even though I don't need any cooling for temperature reasons. I'm doing it to dehumidify. Right? So what I want to happen is I want the air to go through the evaporator coil slowly to stay in contact with the coil longer to pull more moisture out of it. So I reduce the airflow to make that dehumidify very well. So I ask for one or two stages of cooling out of five and I tell the blower to run at low speed. Now, with that being said, if I run the airflow through the evaporator at low speed, I'm also gonna run it through the duct system at low speed because it's the same fan. If your duct is uninsulated and going through an attic, it might start sweating because of that. The proper solution is to insulate the duct and wrap it. If someone doesn't want to do that, you can band-aid it by going to high airflow in dehum mode. A little bit counterintuitive, 
you still get some dehumidification, not as much, and your ductwork will still sweat, but not as much. It's kind of a compromise. Gas heat staging. All right, I got a couple different choices here. System, furnace, low, high. So system means thermostat. The thermostat controls the staging. He knows the set point, he knows the temperature, he knows how far apart they are, he knows how long it's been taking to get there. He is the most equipped thing that you own in this building to control the staging. He should be doing it. However, you can also pick furnace. So if you didn't know, some of our furnaces can control off a single stage thermostat, two stages, right? If you wanna do that, you can have it set up like this. But then you wouldn't have bought this stat either. So there's literally no reason to ever do that. In fact, when I do the next software update for the stat, that feature is gonna go away and it won't even be there. I can also lock this thing in low only. So I can tell it I never, ever, 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 ever wanna to go to high fire, only go to low fire, right? Normally you wouldn't do that, but if for some reason the system was oversized and it was hitting high limit, you may choose to lock out high fire. You could also do the opposite and lock it in high only. I definitely would never do that, right? Just always skip first stage and go to second stage. I, I can't see any really valid reason to do that uh, other than maybe somebody is complaining because they can't hear their furnace anymore. You would think that's a good thing, right? But some people get frustrated like, I used to know it was on because it would make really loud noises, right? Okay, well, we'll make it operate like a dumb old single stage furnace. Really glad you bought a modulating one, but you could do that if you wanted to. I'm not going to. Uh, modulating limits. So on the modulating gas valve furnaces only, you'll see this screen. I can chop off the lower limit of the gas valve or the higher limit. It modulates from 40 to 100% in 1% increments. But let's say I put 100,000 BTU furnace in, I only need 90. Well, my choices were to buy an 80 or buy 100. There's nothing in the middle. So 80 wouldn't have been enough. 100 is too much. You could buy the 100 and then you can throttle it back a little bit, right? The only thing that's weird about this is instead of throttling the percentage, 40 to 100%, I'm actually throttling the CFM, which then is inadvertently throttling back the gas valve. It's kind of a weird way they chose to do it. I can't explain why. But that's what's happening here. If I scroll down, gas heat off delay. 120 seconds is the default. You can go as quick as 90 or as long as 180. 120 is usually pretty good. That means after I'm done with the heat call, I have all this embedded heat in the heat exchanger. It can either, if I do, if I turned off uh, everything you know, inducer, turned off the blower, everything, that heat would go up the duct a little bit, up the exhaust pipe a little bit, and then it would radiate out the cabinet. If I continue to run the blower while shutting the inducer off, then the vast majority of the heat that's embedded in the heat exchanger will go up my duct and into the home, right? So most furnaces will run the blower for X amount of seconds after a heat call. This allows me to adjust the X amount of seconds. Altitude. Uh, I'm in Illinois right now, dude, and this is about as flat as it gets, so I don't know what to tell you here, but if you're out in Denver watching one of our videos, that's, that's cool. Um, you're going to have to put your altitude in. It's going to matter for you for your gas pressure. If you're in Illinois, Indiana, or anywhere else completely flat like us, the defaults are probably fine. Right? Dehumidification drain. Um, the default on this is 15 minutes. That means after a cooling call or dehumidification call is over, and we shut off the compressor. We turn off the main blower fan also. Even if the consumer has told the thermostat it want, they want to run a continuous fan 24 seven nonstop, we still shut the blower off anyway. In this case, for a default of 15 minutes, you can make it 10 if you want to maybe. That allows time for the water to drain down the evaporator coil in the condensate pan and go out the drain. If I don't do that and I run the blower, that'll blow the moisture off the coil back into the airstream which kind of defeats the purpose of all these cool dehumidification features. So I usually put them at 10, 15 is the default. People in Florida and more humid places probably need the more time. I found 10 to be pretty good for us in the Midwest. G terminal. This thermostat, as we explained earlier on one of the previous videos, is not using your normal thermostat wiring. There is no G, Y, W type wiring. Instead, we have four communicating wires, actually two power wires and two communicating wires, right? So we have no way to do anything special with telling the fan to come on. So sometimes you have a special dehumidifier that needs to engage the blower fan to work and you'll wire the G in parallel with the thermostat to the humidifier. So the humidifier can call for it. Can't do that on this, right? But because I'm not using the regular inputs, they allow me to do something flexible with the G terminal. I have three flexible things I can choose from. 
The first one is to force the fan on. If anything is wired to G and R on that thermostat strip down there, anything's wired to G and R, it'll force the fan to do this, which means running low, running medium, or running high. Right? Now, if the system's in a cooling or heating call, it'll run the airflow it needs for the cooling and heating purposes. But if it's in general fan only mode, or even in just regular mode, in the auto but not fan on, it'll go to this fan speed for me. Right? So that could be another device wiring to it. It could be a switch on the wall for all I care, anything you want. There's also a choice of doing the opposite of that. If something wires to G and R, and I pick shutdown, it'll turn off the blower It'll turn off all the heating and cooling and just shut the whole system down. So maybe, uh, maybe you want to put a duct smoke detector in. Those are required on commercial buildings, 2000 CFM and higher, but there's no reason you couldn't do one residentially if you want to. If we detect smoke in the duct, why would we want to continue running your blower to distribute smoke around to all the rooms of your house? That'd be crazy. So you put a duct smoke detector in. If it detects that there's a fire or smoke, It'll send a signal to the G terminal, and I can have it shut this thing down, turn all the heating and cooling off, right? And I can pick whether it's a normally open or normally closed contact. In the case of the smoke detector, it'd be a normally closed contact. The last one is an alert. Alert does absolutely nothing from a control standpoint. All it does is if something wires to that G and R terminal and gives me a normally open or normally closed contact, which I can select, it'll send me an email or text message telling me what that thing is but it'll not affect operation in any way whatsoever. So let's say I pick that one, I hit save. And down below that I have G terminal alert label. By default, if anything alarms on there, it's gonna send me a message that says auxiliary input G alert. That means nothing to anyone. So you have to relabel that. So maybe you wanna put in one of those little wet switches next to your water heater. So if your water heater's leaking, it detects that. But instead of sounding off a buzzer in the basement that no one hears, I can wire it over to the furnace who will receive that signal from the wet switch telling, telling my water heater is leaking. And then I want this message to say water heater leak, some pump failure, generator engaged, whatever you wired up to this thing, right? Name it something intuitive. I'm going to actually go turn that back off so I don't get a bunch of weird false alarms later for things that I don't really have. All right, that's the furnace setup. The last thing I want to show in the furnace is the checkout. I can go under checkout and I can tell it gas heat. It says make sure your gas valve is on, it is and it is. And I can hit next and I can tell it to run so many minutes in low and so many minutes in high. And I can check my gas pressures. We have another video that explains this whole sequence of operation on furnaces. So I'll let you go ahead and watch that one. The link's up here on the top right if you wanna check that out. So that pretty much concludes our furnace discussion. Um, we also have another similar video to this on the AC and heat pump side, so I encourage you to check that one out, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.